Have you ever wondered why we need to ask God to forgive our debts? As the Bible uh, explains in the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 12. Why should God forgive our debts? You see, Matthew 6, 12 appears towards the end of what is often referred as the, the Lord's Prayer, part of the Sermon on the Mount. And... Uh, a discourse on the kingdom of heaven. In this model prayer, Jesus teaches his disciples to pray, uh, forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Some may wonder, why believers who are forgiven of their sin need, need to ask God to forgive uh, you know, us our debts or their debts? And when exploring the forgiveness of sins, it is important to note that there are three aspects of salvation positional, progressive, and ultimate. And positional salvation is often thought as of synonymous with justification and the state of being declared righteous. Progressive salvation involves the process of becoming holy or righteous, or, or righteous as we are set apart in this world for God's purpose. Ultimate salvation is our glorification, and when we are removed from the presence of sin and made complete in holiness, all three aspects of salvation are acts of God completed by grace through faith action. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And also, when you look at uh, Romans 3.21, and uh, let me just read to you all the way to 28. See the way it explains this so clearly. It says uh, in Romans 3, 21 to 28, it says, But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference. For all have seen that have come short glory uh, and have come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood, who uh, to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Where is boasting then? It is excluded by what law of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Hmm. All right. So now, the Christian is positionally righteous. Is positionally righteous, but not practically righteous. We are declared innocent in Christ, but we are still sinning every day. We sin day to day in this world. That's why we still need to ask God to forgive us our debts and why we still need to forgive the debts of others. The debts that Jesus refers to are sins. John addresses the same matter. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. 1 John chapter 1, verse 8 to 9. And Christians should acknowledge their sins and offenses against God and confess them to the only one who can forgive. Jesus in Matthew chapter 6 teaches humility and praying for God's recognition rather than man's recognition. In Matthew chapter 6 verse 1 it says take heed that you do not uh, take heed that you do not uh, your alms do your alms before men to be seen of them otherwise you have no reward of your father which is in heaven. And also verse 5 says and when you pray Thou shalt not be as the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their rewards. He is speaking to a Jewish audience here, showing them that their law-based righteousness is not enough to enter the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5 verse 20, he says, For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall in no way enter into the kingdom of heaven. 
And also uh, verse 48, it says, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Basically, be ye holy, perfect, good, separated. All right? John is speaking to brethren, pointing to a Christian audience, both Jew and Gentile. All right? First John 3, 13. Marvel not, my brethren, my brethren, if the world hate you. You see, he's speaking to both uh, a Christian, Jew and Gentile uh, uh, team. And we see in verse 14, 1 John 3, 14, he says, We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. And also verse 16 of 1 John 3, 16, he says, Therefore, hereby perceive we the love of God because he's laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. He laid his life for us. So lay, let's lay down our lives for the brethren, for our friends, for our brothers and sisters. This is critical to understand as it means the principle of asking God to forgive our debts is universal. Believe in the person and the work of Jesus Christ and this will lead to justification. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life john 6 47 verily verily i say unto you he that believes on me has everlasting life first john 5 from verse 1 whosoever believes that jesus is the christ is born of god and everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him by this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandment for this is the love of God Romans 4 1 to 3 what shall we say then that Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh has found for if Abraham were justified by works he has whereof to glory but not before God for what says the scripture Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which you received and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I deliver unto you that first which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's the gospel, my friends. Believe how Christ died, he was buried and rose again. As the scripture says and a repeated request for forgiveness is not required for salvation in this sense once you're saved you're saved post salvation confession of sin and request for forgiveness are for the purpose of a healthy relationship with God we must ask God to forgive our debts for the continuance and strengthening of our fellowship with him a daily prayer that God would uh, and forgive us our debts is not necessary for justification but instead is an aspect of the continuing process of sanctification I don't know if you have understood something here we are saved once but just like in a family we are born once into our family your father and your mother bore you once you are a member of that family if you do something wrong maybe you uh, you know, you break the remote of the TV, you break up late, or maybe uh, you spoil something, you pour some, you know, oil on the bed sheets of your father's bed. You're in a bad relationship with them. They are still your father. Will they hate you or or take you back or say you're no longer my child because you 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 uh, you broke the remote of the TV? No, you just tell them, Dad, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for what I've done. I'm sorry, please. That's basically the main thing. So you don't go and tell them, Oh, Dad, please, can you become my father once again? No. We are saved once. And our confession for forgiveness is now on the basis of relationship, not on the basis of salvation. All right? And that's the end of our today's Bible study lesson. Hope it was a blessing to you. Hope you've learned something. 
And remember, you can always download this podcast to listen later offline or to share to your friends and family. And please don't forget to favorite our podcast and uh, subscribe to our channel so that you can always be notified whenever we post a new Bible study lesson. And if you like to get saved or you need a step-by-step Bible verses on the order of salvation so that you can well preach to your friends or family, or maybe you just feel led to support our ministry or buy some cool Christian merchandise, kindly visit our website, Keith mwoki.com for more details and breakdown. Otherwise, I hope to see you soon in the next one.